So if you watched our water sanitization video two weeks ago, you know we talked about doing this, well, it's time. Yeah. If you saw our video on sanitizing your fresh water system for your RV, you know that we bypassed the hot water heater and didn't sanitize that because we can't put bleach in there. A lot of you reached out and asked why we had to do that in two stages where we did the tank and then the lines. And the answer is because of the Nautilus system. If we were to just pump bleach water into our systems through that, it would go through the water heater. After that video, a couple of viewers reached out and mentioned that they knew how to bypass the water heater in the Nautilus system. So I tested it out and they're absolutely right. And that makes that process a whole lot easier. So basically in that process, you can bypass the water heater by using the little red knob in the Nautilus system. That's all it is. You can be in dry camp mode or in fresh water mode. And if you turn the little red knob to the left, bypassed. I tested this out today and it works great. So that greatly simplifies that process. I will have an update to the blog post by the time you see this video. So if you're, if you have the Nautilus system and you're going to sanitize your fresh tanks and your fresh lines, be sure to look at the process in the blog because it's much simpler than it was when we did it. By the way, Tara's here today. She's just doing behind the camera work. Yeah. I, I didn't feel like being on camera. It's really a pretty simple process at the high level and it's going to be pretty much the same for everybody. Obviously, if you have a uh, on-demand hot water system, something like that, it's, you don't have to do this. Uh, maybe you do. I honestly, I don't know. But we have a suburban water heater and A, it has an anode rod that is designed to corrode so your tank doesn't corrode. That needs to be checked once a year and we're going to be doing that. While you do that, it's a good idea to flush your system. Well, we're going to go one step further. We're going to flush it and then we're going to sanitize it. And we're going to sanitize it using vinegar versus bleach because the vinegar won't react with the metal like the bleach does. And that's really all there is to it. We're going to flush it. We're going to plug it back up. We're going to fill it with vinegar. We're going to let it sit overnight just like we did with the bleach. It doesn't have to be quite as long. The bleach is 8 to 12 hours. Uh, I'm told by our friend Todd, the RVIA Master Certified Technician, that six hours, five to six hours is good enough for the vinegar. We're going to let it sit overnight. Why not? Thanks again, Todd. We don't have him on video this time because this was a pretty simple process, but I wanted to iron out some of the details with him. He's a great resource for us to be able to get the right information for you guys. So thanks again, Todd and Stephanie from Two Beards and a Babe. We'll have the link to their channel down below. Step one is to turn off the water heater and get all the hot water out so that we're not scalding ourselves when we pull the anode rod. Our system has both gas and electric. They're both off. I shut off the water heater inside and then we turned on the hot water taps in both the bathroom and the kitchen just to run all the water out real quick. So now our water heater, this is a, this is a furnace, our water heater now has just cold water in it and it's safe to work on. Step one, take the cover off. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. So before I jump into the water heater here, I just want to relieve pressure from the system. Turn off the water so it's not filling the system. Don't you don't dare. <laughs> I'm also going to relieve pressure here. There shouldn't be much. Well, that reminds me, I need our, our little dish tub thingy to catch the water. I'll go get it. See. I'll go get it. We're not in the best site for no. this. No. It's quite, <laughs> We're like it's quite right, good. our RV next door is right here. Yeah. Here's your um, bucket, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Did you bucket call me, person. sir? Thank you, ma'am. So as far as tools that you're going to need, you're going to need a socket that fits the end of the anode rod. For us on our suburban water heater, that's one and one sixteenth inch. You're also going to want a flushing wand like this has a regular connection on this end, regular hose connection, and just a little wand there that you can we'll shove it up in there and hose it around and wash it up and stuff. So the first step is to take this anode rod out. Now be forewarned, th this is why we turned off the water heater and got all the hot water out, is it's going to just kind of come gushing out of there. I've got this bucket, it's not going to hold all 12 gallons, so it's going to get a bit messy but I wanted to have this to kind of catch some of the big chunks of calcium and sediment and stuff, just so we can see what it is that's in there that we're cleaning out. 
Luckily, this is not crazy stuck. You having fun yet? You can see that there is a bunch of sediment, looks like shells and stuff in here. This is our anode rod. This should be checked once a year. Probably just go ahead and replace it. They're like 15 bucks, so it's not like it's a big deal. As long as you're in here, flushing this out and checking it, just put a new one in. It always reminds me of a salted pretzel when it's all corroded like that for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> the first time that we did this, we had been RVing for a year and it was barely anything. So it's going to depend on the quality of the water, where you've been. You know, the whole idea of this is to sacrifice itself and it will corrode before the other metal parts in your water heater corrode. So we've got a new one of these, but I'm not going to worry about that yet. I'm gonna get this guy up in here and flush. Oh, seat's wet. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> so this again, this is a you know rocket surgery. Just gonna shove it in there and rinse it out. Rocket surgery. Yep. I'm gonna kind of drag it forward. See all the stuff coming out. All I'm doing here is, you know, most of the sediment is going to be on the bottom. So I'm taking this, pointing it down, left and right, and just kind of dragging it out and having it kind of push the sediment out. So now it's pretty well flushed out. And if I weren't going to sanitize it, honestly, this is where I would put a new anode rod in there and be done with it. Not that difficult. We're going to sanitize and we're also going to get a scope up in there and see what's inside so we can kind of show you before and after see if the vinegar cleansing and stuff really makes a big difference it helps if i get a good orientation going in okay so that's straight up and it looks like our heating element you can see there's quite a bit of corrosion on that and we just have some sediment in the back back here this is the bottom. I think that's just it looks like more sediment, but I'm not real sure. The main thing I'm curious about when we do this is how well it cleans off the element itself. I don't see a lot on the sides. I do see quite a bit on the uh, heating element. You can see that we had quite a bit of sediment still in the bottom there that we'll need to flush out. Um, I don't think it's corrosion on the tank. It seemed like sediment. Also, it looked like we had quite a bit of corrosion on our heating element. So I'll be curious to see how the vinegar attacks that and loosens it up. So the next step is really just to plug this hole back up with a new anode rod, fill it with vinegar, let it sit overnight. I like to use the actual anode rod from Suburban. They do make less expensive varieties out there, but when it's 15 bucks, why? Might as well go with the one from the manufacturer and do it right. Old versus new, quite a bit, it's doing its job. I'm gonna put a little bit of PTFE tape, just some uh, little plumber's thread tape on here. This can be a little tricky to thread because you've got the weight of the rod kind of wanting to take it out of straightness. Now to fill this thing full of vinegar, we're going to use a bucket and a siphon, much like we did for the sanitization of the lines. We're going to put this thing in winterized mode, which is siphon to fixtures from pump. The key is we're going to ignore the one for the water heater, and we're going to turn that into normal mode, not bypass mode. So it's gonna look like this. Winterize this way, put 
this way, this way, this way. So left, so down, left, right. Normally this would be like this in this configuration to bypass the water heater. We don't want to bypass the water heater this time. We want to keep it like this. That way we're going to siphon to this fixture using hot water, pull this into the pump. As far as the mixture of vinegar to water, it's really not that critical. Honestly, the more vinegar, the better, but you're probably not going to want to scrounge up 12 gallons of vinegar and have it be straight in there. You could, but it's not necessary. Um, I've seen videos that say a 50 50 mixture and that's fine. This was just as much vinegar as we could must get at the store. Yeah, they, there was a little <laughs> bit of a vinegar shortage. I've got a little bit of water hitting here already. We're going to dump this into it and then we're going to use that and siphon it all in there. Cool. Should be noted that it's just plain white distilled vinegar, not like apple cider vinegar or anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it stuck to my hand. He threw it at me. <laughs> We've got our handy dandy siphon. And we're in the right mode. I'm gonna turn on the hot water on this. I was curious why there was nothing coming out of here, but it's because there's no water to push through on the hot water side because the water heater is full of air. So we're gonna let this bucket siphon empty and then we're gonna go back onto shore water let it fill up. Right now, the only place for this water to go, because all the fixtures are off, is the only void, which is the water heater. And we should be able to have no. evidence of that once we get this in there. Now we're going to reconnect our shore water. I'm going to put this thing back into city water mode. Also, I'm gonna hopefully hear a little bit of pressure release right here from water being in the tank. Yeah. That's the pressurized air from the vinegar water filling it up. Now I'm gonna fill the tank up the rest of the way by just having shore water on. You can hear it in there gurgling and bubbling. I'm gonna keep letting a little bit of air out of here at a time until some starts to come out. Actually, I can just leave this open until it, all the air is purged because this is at the very top of the water heater. And once this thing fills and starts coming out here and I close this, we should stop hearing that water flow. I can smell the uh, vinegar air coming out of the tank. If you're wondering what this thing here is, that is our Protang fire suppression system. We have a separate video on that. I'll link it below, but we have fire suppression tubes in here, in our refrigerator area, down by the generator. We have the whole system covered. Oh. Not quite done yet. As an added precaution, I'm gonna put our water heater in bypass mode. That way, if we accidentally try to use the hot water inside, it's bypassed. And that's it for phase one. Got the thing full of vinegar water. We're gonna let that sit overnight. And then in the morning, we will do another pull of the plug in, purge it and rinse it. And we'll take a look and see what it looks like. So see you tomorrow. We let it soak overnight. And this morning I put the bypass back in normal mode so that we could run the hot water through. Again, the water was not hot because the water heater wasn't on. And now we're just going to pop this thing off just like we did before and flush it out and see what we get. Ready? Are you going to put the scope back in it and check it out? Right? Yes. Okay. We're going to scope it. Okay. And we know the RV is filthy. It's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, for the record, we're in a site with a whole bunch of pine trees and sap and, this, and it's been, it rained a couple days ago, so... It's filthy. It's, it, the RV is filthy. We know that. Please go easy on us. We know, we know it, we hate it. <laughs> yeah. Ready? Same process. I'm going to turn off the water, relieve a little bit of pressure. 
with our accumulator tank in there, it holds pressure a little bit more than normal. Still going. <laughs> going to also relieve pressure here. This is just fresh water, of course. Well, that heating element looks a lot better. Still appears to be sediment in there still yeah we got some more sediment to get out of there see it well you think that's just loose sediment yeah let's see if i can push on it with the camera this thing has been a pain to try to get all the sediment out there so i've got a dryer vent brush that i'm going to try and see what it does Seem to be doing anything. Okay, that is about as good as it's gonna get. I got a good 95% of it out of there. And this is just the stuff that made it to the bucket. And this was after an initial flush that got quite a bit out. And you can see some of it on the ground over here. So that's it for out here. I'm gonna put the anode rod back in and fill it up, turn it on and we should be good to go. A couple quick notes while I'm over here. I was lucky in that we found a way to siphon the vinegar straight into the tank. That basically gave me the ability to siphon as much as I wanted in there. But if you don't have that ability, if you don't have the Nautilus system, you can either pour it directly in here and just get as much as you can in there before it starts to overflow. Uh, the port for the anode rod is not at the very bottom, so you can get stuff in there uh, without it overflowing. Or you can try using, if you have one of these pressure relief valves, you'll notice it has threads on this side of it. This is obviously blocked by this, but this is held on by a couple of screws. Um, this is just the venting for the propane side of the water heater. But if I could move this out of the way, I could screw something in here and then feed it in that way. So that's another option you have if you want to get vinegar into your water heater. Probably the best way. Just put the anode rod back in and uh, fill via this port here. It's just a pressure relief valve, but there's no reason that vinegar can't go that way. That pretty much wraps this up out here. Once water starts to come out of this piece here. I know it's full, and then I'll bleed the rest of the air inside and turn on the hot water so we can take a shower. All right, we're done. So as you can see, the process of getting the sediment out through the porthole for the anode rod is probably the most difficult part. If we had done this in a location where I wasn't worried about water just running off onto the ground, I could have just spent the time and just worked it out. It's all just a matter of randomness and currents and getting stuff to come out that hole. 
a couple things I tried that you might have seen. I tried that siphon thing that I have, and just in case you know, we have trouble siphoning water into the tank. It's just a primer is really all it is. I've never had to use it, it's just something I carry. That didn't work. I got our dryer vent cleaner, the long thing that's like this with the blue brush on it. That seemed to help. That basically, I think, having the water in there at the same time as that brush, kind of mixing things up and stirring things around, the more you can stir things up in there, the better, the more chance of that sediment coming into contact with the flow that's gonna come out of the hole. So I think that's the key. I think when you do this, if you have the wand, you gotta have the wand and get up in there. Uh, have a long brush or a stick or something in there that you can kind of stir things around and, and get that to flow and come out. Uh, you'll see in the footage of the last scope, there's still some stuff in there. It's not perfect, um, but I'll tell you, I did this a year and a half ago and I didn't have the scope. And if you're just going by the fact that, oh look, I was flushing it out and a bunch of stuff came out and now stuff's not coming out anymore, you'd think it's done, and I did. And so it probably ran with a lot of extra sediment from the first year rolling into the second year and a half. So I think we're in really good shape now, even with a little bit of sediment in there. The heating element is really clean. The tank is really clean. New anode rod. Uh, the heating area for the propane side is really clean. So we're good to go. It's sanitized, it's clean. The last step is to turn on the water heater monitor panel. And I'm going to turn on both propane and electric. You'll notice in there that there are two separate heating elements. They don't really know or care about each other. You can run both of them to heat up your water super, super fast, which is what I'm gonna do because I need a shower, Tara needs a shower, and, oh, you can hear it kick on. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this. It's a pretty easy process, probably easier than it looked, and, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, and here's some outtakes. The main thing to remember is... The main thing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Here, I can, I can loosen them up for you. Be a good assistant. Oh. <laughs> you sure you can? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Get in front of the camera so they can I see. Can't. No, because I'm trying really hard. <laughs> but I have I put lotion on right before. Oh, screw it. You do it. So. <laughs> you can you don't have to be able to part. I can go cook you, you may me. you may go cook dinner for me. Now. I'm allowed to go cook dinner for you. <laughs> Guys, don't try this at home. I if I didn't you're know not, he you're was not, joking. You're not in the, you're not in. Oh hey, how can you see me now? How about now? Can you see me now? <laughs> Get your face in there. Well, I probably won't use it, but he's giving me permission to go cook some chicken wings. So nice. But I know you're just joking. I'm just joking. But feel free to have a cold beer writer for me. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that we could have picked a better site to film this video. <laughs>